Olympics for 2019-20 that have been published earlier today. I'm going to hand over to Jeff very shortly. He's going to ask me a few questions and we'll take it from there. Over to you, Jeff. Jay, I'm actually just trying to, I'm looking on the uh, Office on Rallon Road Twitter account to retweet uh, the link to get people to uh, to join in. Hopefully that will pop up in a minute. Um, yeah, it's exciting. New stats are out. Um, it, if, what, does it really take like six months to compile them from April through December? Is it, does it take that long? <laughs> I couldn't say it takes me six months solid, but although it has felt like that this year, because we've done a lot of extra work, which maybe we'll come on to in a minute. Okay. Um, there's a there's a number of reasons why it takes a bit of time to pull these together. Um, right. the, the main source data that we use, I think you're aware, is, is ticketing data. Yes. Um, but we do get that from a, a system, uh, a rail planning tool input. Um, and that's available about three to four months after the end of the financial year. So you have to sort of wait for the rail companies to feed those figures through for you then to <clears throat> do the manipulation on that. Yeah. Okay. And then there are various other data sources that feed in. Um, such as we get local ticketing information from passenger transport executive areas. And because they're not on the national systems, we want to get the estimates as accurate as possible. Right. Um, so we feed that information in and that takes some time to collect from those um, from those areas. OK, so the spreadsheet is available to download. I think everybody knows, everybody fixates a little bit on, on the lesser used and the least used. But I'm going to get to that last to kind of okay. build, build up the suspense. <laughs> Um, I think the most obvious thing that we should acknowledge is the dreaded C word, uh, COVID. <laughs> but these these stats are from April 2019 through to March of 2020. So am I right in thinking only the last week or two were maybe COVID travel affected? So it's actually next year's statistics that yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see the decimation possibly in, in passenger numbers. Yeah, that's right. I think we, we think it's got about two or three weeks at the end of the financial year. So from mid around mid March onwards, although obviously it, it probably had some impact earlier in March in some parts of the country on certain services. Right. People perhaps started to do less uh, longer distance traveling in particular. Um, but yeah, very much the, the last week or two of March would be severely impacted. And then what what the heck are you going to do next year? It's going to be crazy. You might have some stations, some of the lesser used ones that have zero passengers. That would be madness right if no one's been there the whole of this I, year is that, is I, mean, that possible? <laughs> I guess it is possible i think yeah we'll obviously see what what happens sort of for the rest of the year but if i mean we're looking to report um what's actually happened as close as possible as, as accurately as possible in terms of um the numbers of entries and exits at individual stations how busy the stations are um so if there are lots of zeros there then that's what we'll be looking to to report okay so i'm just doing another just doing another retweet live. So that I can... It could, but as you say, the, the statistics, the estimates that we produce uh, next year could look very different to the ones we produce this year. It's going to be uh, completely different. It'd be a strange anomaly. It, what I was saying to a friend last night, you know, fingers crossed, uh, optimistic thinking. What if, you know, that this COVID came in at the, at the end of March? You know, what if maybe we come out of it at the end of March, beginning of April next year? It might be that, that you know, the exact period by which you do your stats is mirrored exactly by you know the exact length of time that travel restrictions were in place so that that could be a thing but anyway so these figures not COVID effective this is the period before uh and my first question for you, for you is um we always keep an eye on London Waterloo because it's always around the 96 7 8 9 million mark and yeah. I was thinking maybe this will be the year that it busts through and makes 100 million but it hasn't it's it's gone down, hasn't it? It has gone down. Yeah, why, we think. Why has it gone down? <laughs> we think. I mean, we think that is the, the although we COVID impacts probably only the last, as we say, the last two or three weeks. We think that explains a decrease in usage at, right. at, at most of most stations. There's been a decrease in usage this year, and that's what, solely across the board. All rail travel in in Britain. Uh, even in yeah, even those last few weeks, that's had an impact. The growth, the usual growth that we've been seeing on previous years has been. Over overridden by just the last two or three weeks of COVID impacted travel, so that it has gone down. It has affected um, not by much, and we think, yeah, for Waterloo, as as for most other stations in the country, that has been affected by those last two or three weeks of um, March, God, and so that that together with some SWR strikes, strike action during the year in 1920, we think that explains the the dip, London Waterloo. 
they had some there was it was on Saturdays wasn't it that they were doing a lot of strikes I thought I thought that was last year I thought that was during 2019 which leads into my next question because myself and Vicky we visited uh Corfe Castle which is on the Swanage Heritage line yeah but Southwest Railway were running a special summer Saturday service to it but the day that we went was one of their days, one of their strike Saturdays. So, but we still went there, but not by Southwest trains. And I note that Corfe Castle is in the list, is in the official spreadsheet. So you are you are counting those ones that got a Saturday service because GWR did one to Bishop's Lydiard as well. Is that has that been counted? We haven't got so for Corfe Castle. Yeah, we have got that in the data set. We do try and list all mainline stations where services are running. Um, we don't have Bishop's Lydiard in the set, so that's a, that's a new one for me. <laughs> we don't have any. We don't get any uh, data for Wharf Castle or for Bishop's Lydiard. They're not on the industry systems, so we wouldn't have any data. But if they're running mainline services during the year, then they should be in our list. So that that's one for me to take away, Jeff, and, and have okay. a look at. Okay, I I can see a question has popped up. Right yeah, Sabat already. Hi uh we'll get to that question <laughs> yeah come back to that because uh yeah there's a very amusing note in the, in your spreadsheet this morning next next to british steel red curve that basically you know alludes to the fact that it only got that number of people because it's a least used station but we'll get to that in a minute we're building up to the, the least used uh what i do want to chat about next is new stations so what were the new stations for this period i'm guessing was Meridian Water, Rob Royston, West Warrington, were they in there? They were, yeah, they were three. There were four new stations, and I've made a few of these somewhere, trying to find my notes. Um, I think it was Worcester, was it Worcester Parkway. Worcestershire Parkway was the other one that you didn't mention. So there's okay. four stations, yeah. So that's now in there. So that's yes. got some usage, but probably not a whole year's worth of usage, only probably like a few a few weeks or a few months worth. Probably not a that's whole. That's right. Yeah, obviously, depending on when it opened, it's, it's any usage during the year. Um, okay. So... Yeah, obviously when it opened. So I'm thinking the new ones are Worcestershire Parkway, uh, Warrington West, Rob Royston. Um, just, would, it, would it have been, oh, Meridian Water was in there. This is That's fascinating right. because I worked out quickly just now, um, something I like to do, a subset, is uh, the top 10 of London's least used stations. Okay. Angel Road sort of closed and was replaced by Meridian Water during the period. There's an amusing anomaly that both Angel Road and Meridian Water <laughs> feature in London's top 10 least used stations but they are in effect the same station so yeah. meridian water is in there as well okay all right and um there's probably some new stations i think kintour just opened up in the last couple of months but that so that'll be in next year's stats not not the stats that have just come That's out right. yeah okay right next i've got a complete curveball of a question for you when myself and vicky did all the stations in 217 uh uh, we did a station called Man United Halt, right next to the railway, uh, right next to the uh, the football stadium. We also did IBM, which is just west out of Glasgow, and we did Redco British Steel. Now, interestingly, those three stations, are you able to confirm what their status is? Are they closed? Are they mothballed? Are you counting their stats? In terms of the stats, <laughs> yeah. um, so... Our understanding is that IBM, the services were suspended or permanently suspended in December 18. And so we don't, although they're in our historical time series data set, we do list IBM in there. There were no services uh, running to or from that station in the latest year, 2019-20. And so they're not in our in our data set. And because that station was closed or there were no, there were no services calling there. Right. Uh, during the whole year. So there's, I suppose there is that distinction between closed and services calling at that station. I think there is, because I don't, I, in my stance, I don't think those stations are closed. I just think they've, the operator has decided to suspend passenger services to it, which is kind of a, you know, a, a, a workaround than actually closing a station. I think in the case of IBM, Scott Rail are planning maybe to, it's mothballed because they may reopen it in the future if there's like, say, a development of housing or whatever but those three aren't listed at what you're saying in in your stats because no, so red red car bridge is still right. is um and we have data for that that closed in december or the services ceased in december 2019 right um so we do have that in the this year's data set and it's in the historical time series data set and the manchester united football stadium stop right. is listed but again i don't think that's not on the industry system so we don't have any data right 
as far as I'm aware, we haven't ever had any data for that station. Interesting. Interesting. I, well, it, I don't, I, it, what I don't know is whether, so, so I don't know if you said you went to services, services were running this year or not. That's I think they stopped. stopped. We were there in 2017. I think they stopped a year later in 2018. In 2019, there were Northern chose not to right. run. Services. That's probably one we need to we need to check out as well, whether it should be in our list or not. Could, could you get on that and find out for next year? We will. Yeah. So that does lead into because you mentioned Redka British Steel, uh, which I went to with my friend Rob. That Northern were just running two trains a day. It's now been closed. I heard an amazing story that on the last day, like about 30 or 40 people were on the platform to get the last possible train. You've got to note yourself in the spreadsheet that says the number of passengers here may be reflected by the fact that it's it's because it's least used. And Rafael asks is, yeah, what's your what's your true opinion? Not your false one, Jay, uh, Rafael, Jay. What's your true personal stance on people like me and others that do a thing which I now, I guess, is called least used tourism. You publicize that Bernie Arm is the least used station. Yeah, are 100 people now going to go flock to Bernie Arms some point soon because it's the least used station. How does that make you feel? <laughs> I think it's great. I mean, I think it gives us a lot of profile for these uh, these statistics, a uh, lot of interest in it from people around the country. And if yeah, if people like going out to visit different bits of the country and least used station, then but good luck but, for them, really. But it's skewing the stats. It's surely not a true reflection of what the real statistics are for that station, no? But I'm, we're counting who's going there. I could, it depends. I suppose it depends what you're using the statistics for. If you're using them to make a a business case, this is probably a bad example with a very least used station. I don't know, but um, you can use the statistics for a number of different purposes. We know that, and we know they are used for a number of different purposes as well. So, how much those stations are used, uh, how that changes over time, um, is is there a need for a new housing in that area? that sort of thing, bus, buses and, and other related transport. So, yeah, if we can produce these statistics and we, we try and add the notes and hopefully the notes are helpful. Um, and I think people generally know, yeah, for the least use that that, that does encourage some people to visit them, um, particularly where we promote them in our, um, in our stats. Right, okay. Uh, Richard Smith has just asked, how do you apportion data for group stations, e.g. tickets sold to Worcester stations? can be used to either Forgate Street or Shrub Hill? How does this guess get updated? Good question. Put it is. I, on, the, <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> um, so we do, I think that the easy way out on this one is to refer people to our uh, quality and methodology report. Um, we do, we've published more information this year on our quality and methodology, um, but very briefly, we do make estimates for group stations. Um, we do use, where there is any um, ticketing information to the specific destinations in those group stations. We use those splits, what which stations people are traveling to and from. We also, at a number every year, we carry out a number of manual counts. So this is typically cameras up at stations, which are counting. This is typically at group stations. It's counting an accurate count over what? one or two days. What? People sit there watching the CCTV going. No, they're, they're cameras that are put up. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So there are cameras that are put up, and there someone is someone then watches those and counts the number of passengers. And you, I know that's a thing on the DLR in London. They have these sort of strips above the entrances, and as people move through, it, it, it there's an automated system there to count physical yeah, the, things. The cameras are specifically for this these statistics, and they're put up at a selected number of stations to to actually sort of monitor the splits that we're using at these group stations. I'm going to say something that will make you. Shake your head in, in dismay. People watching, if you ever want to skew DLR statistics and you've got ten, eight minutes waiting for a train, just walk in and out the entrance multiple times and it will just, it'll just <laughs> add fake <laughs> entrances and exits to that station. As a, as a statistician, Jeff, I possibly couldn't possibly condone that. <laughs> uh, I feel like we've been we've been dancing around the subject that we know that every, everybody loves. And I think it's the most interesting, which is what inspires me and others. Uh, to go to these stations, and I know that all the other press channels will pick up on it later, and that's the least used stations, the ones that the backwaters that nobody goes to. So um, let's straight away say well done, Bernie Arms, because it has previously been a least used station over 10 years ago now. So I think it's like 40-something passengers, but Bernie Arms was closed for a period of time, and it only reopened towards the end of this period. So is it should it really be Elton and Austin, which is number two, or is is Bernie Arms allowed to take the crown? 
With, I mean, with, yeah, with, 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 sound like uh, the government here. We're following the numbers and following the signs, Jeff. Um, so yeah, it was it was the least used from the data and the sources that we've got. Um, you're you're right. It was closed for most of the year. I think there was a ninety percent drop. So yeah. it is it a fairly lightly used station. I think it's it yeah. been a few hundred. Um, but yeah, down to forty two. That that's all because it was closed for most of the year. Um, we've reported that and explained that's what's happened. So obviously people can make their own mind up if they think it's the least used or if they think it's uh, a different station. Right. So when 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 the powers that be take your figures, they also look at the notes. And so things like, yes, there was a strike or yes, there was engineering works or yes, that this area was resignaled. That's all that's all catered for. And it's and it's not just I mean, I'd, I'd hope so. I mean, it, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the stats are used for all different kinds of purposes, um, whether how much someone's using the least use or specifically for any particular purpose other than to go and visit it. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not too sure. But yeah, we we obviously we present uh, as much commentary as we can. Um, we know there's an interest in the least used and in some of the big changes in usage, whether that be up or down. Um, we try and provide com as much commentary as we can on that as well. Have, have you ever been to Bernie Arms, Jay? Have you got an inclination I, to go there now? I haven't. I hadn't heard of Bernie Arms. I must have been. You've never heard of Bernie Arms? <laughs> not before. Not before I'd uncovered it as a least used station. Now, is there a little? Is there a little itch? You're like, well, maybe I should go. Maybe I should do this. Go on. Um, not particularly. Not particularly. It's quite hard to get to, isn't it? You get a drive there. Or... No, you get the you, you get the train there. Like you get the train to Norwich, right? You get, you get a cup of tea, and then you get the Great Yarmouth train that goes via Bernie Arms, and there's about a twenty minute turnaround, and you come back to Norwich, fast train back to London. You can do it there and back in about five six hours. It's a that's a day trip. It's a day out. What are you doing Saturday? I'll no, look, come on, I'll look into it. <laughs> it's, I'll it's, look into it. it. You're okay. You're allowed to go. <laughs> Uh, I can see people asking about uh, Robbie, uh, Robbie Morrison. Hey, Robbie. Uh, people asking about Surrey and Betchworth. I haven't checked yet because uh, for ages the least used in Surrey was Long Cross because it had a limited service. But then figures started to increase and Betchworth became least used. But I believe now at Long Cross there's an hourly service. So I haven't checked yet. So that's making me want to go and check. Uh, long I cross. think I did. I did look what that one up actually. That oh. one. So I think that one. We'll have to check it. I think that one may have fallen slightly. So perhaps not what you were expecting there. Oh right. Let's get. Well, it's now getting a more regular service. Okay. I need to go yeah. and look there myself. Okay. Right. Uh, I don't want to take up uh, your entire day because people on Twitter can do that. I believe there's a you. You, you guys are promoting the hashtag Ask J. Is that is that right? Yes. That's, okay. that's yes. That's right. Yeah. We did that last year, and we're doing that again. Doing that again. Um, okay. this year. So you're there all day to answer questions about all yeah. the most any, any of, yeah the statistics here any, so i think any of the questions hopefully any of the questions that have come up on the on the chat here that we haven't covered hopefully we can answer those on our twitter the orr twitter page okay. uh, and any questions we get directly to twitter as well we can have a go answering those but also you know for the real nerds and others we drill into the spreadsheet but you you make a quite a few on your you should plug your website in a minute but you you do you make a lot of like infographics and stuff and, yeah. and charts and that kind of stuff so what other what other documents do you produce okay so yeah there's a so we've got quite a lot of infographics and videos so there's a regional map so this is on our data portal uh page um we've got a uh, animated chart of the top 10 stations for each of the last 10 years and so that's for great britain and stations outside of london right um so people can see how the stations have have changed and th there have been some questions on those which i'll answer later today okay um, so that's all on the or website which you've been tweeting this morning anyway so if you're on the or twitter then there's links there's links to that or well, people are saying long cross getting half an hour it's gone up to half an hour okay, uh -huh. right. okay. Gonna, might be time to take a trip back to long cross See what's there. Jay, look, if you're in London, then you should go to Long Cross. You should just, I, I place upon you the challenge to go at some point when it's safe to travel to take a trip to a random least stroke, lesser used station. I feel like you should. <laughs> okay. Sounds like a good idea. That's it. Right. I've got no more questions. Thank you. We're going to finish up there. Okay. Thank Thanks you very much. much. Thank you very much, Jeff, for all the questions. Thanks for thank being you. kind to me. And thank you to everyone. <laughs> There's obviously some people listening to us. So thank you very much. And yeah, keep in touch with our Twitter site and our uh, statistics.